Welcome everybody, thank you for participating to today's Techno Talk about spice processing, specifically grinding and mixing of spices. The production cycle from harvesting spices to the supply of ready products to your end customer consists of a chain of different process steps. Every process step is as important to achieve an optimal product quality of your product. Today we will highlight on grinding and mixing technologies and I would like to introduce my colleague Benedict Capillas to learn you a little bit more about grinding of spices. Benedict? Thanks Dan, it's nice to be here and to talk about spices. So before we dive in into the spice process, I'd like to highlight the spice characteristics and their challenges. So when we think about spices, we all have a lot of different spices in mind. So the diversity of spices is huge. And you can imagine, if you think about milling, uh, they all have a different milling behavior, which makes it a bit tricky for us. But even if we think about just one certain spice product, for example, coriander seeds. Coriander seeds also have natural fluctuations because coriander seeds are natural products. So they're different from harvest to harvest. And they're different in oil content, fat content, moisture content, and many more. And all of those things have an influence on the milling behavior in terms of fineness or throughput. But our customers, you, and especially our end customers, they don't only care about the fineness and the throughput, the aroma and the flavor, actually the taste of the product and also the color is very important or highly important. And therefore, especially for the aroma, the volatile oil content is responsible for. So we as a mill manufacturer need to make sure that the loss of volatile oils during the milling process is as low as possible. And you can imagine this is by far not everything. There are much more um, challenges and characteristics which need to be taken into consideration when we think about spice milling. Now let's dive in into the spice process. So we can offer you a solution for cleaning your spice product. With our zigzag classifier, we can make sure that heavy and light impurities can be separated. So afterwards you get a pure spice product. Next step can be crushing and cutting. So some of the spice products like roots or for example, big chili pots, they are too too big to feed directly into the spice milling system. So they need to be pre-cut, pre-crushed. So at this stage, we are working with our Rotoplex, which is a cutting mill. And the job here is really just to create flakes. It's not really milling. It's just to get the right size that we can feed it afterwards into the fine milling system. And this is where I want to talk to you today about fine milling. And there are also certain upgrades available like cool grinding and cryogenic grinding which I will present to you later on. So first of all, I want to show you the typical and commonly used spice mills in the market. This is our Ultraplex UPZ and the Contraplex CW and CW2. So if I would need to describe the Ultraplex in one word, it would be definitely flexibility. With this system, you can get the maximum flexibility since you can install several milling tools. You can install a plate beater unit, you can install a pin disc unit, a swing beater unit or a beater unit. And combined with several grinding tracks and several screens, it gives you a very high flexibility. So most of our customers, they are not only milling one spice product, they are milling several spice products. So for them, it's very handy since they only need one milling system for several products. And in addition, this mill can create a very high milling fineness. And of course, all of you have different capacities and throughputs in mind. So we have several machine sizes available to fulfill your requirements. And in addition, this system is very easy to clean. So the operator usability is on a very high level. All in all, the UP set is a perfect system for fibrous spices. One example would be milling of ginger. So you can see the market fineness of 95% below 500 micron can be perfectly matched 
with the UP set. But as you know, there are also other products in the market. Some of them tend to be very sticky and oily and maybe you even request a higher milling fineness. If this is the case, then the mill of choice is our Contraplex CW2. If I would need to characterize this system, then I can definitely say this system will give you the maximum performance for oily and fatty spices. The reason is this system is equipped with two rotating pin discs. Actually, they are rotating in the opposite direction. That means we are getting double the speed, actually 240 meters per second. So that means we can create a high milling fineness. And in addition, due to the point that both pin discs are rotating, the centrifugal forces are pulling very hard on each particle. So it's hardly not possible for them to stay inside the milling zone and create any blockages. And this in combination with this wide chamber teardrop shaped housing prevents any product buildups. So all in all, this system is a great solution for oily seed spices. One example would be milling of cloves. So you can see a fineness of 95% below 250 micron can be reached. And on our 250 CW2 model, we can reach a throughput of 300 kg per hour. But same as for the UP set, there are several machine sizes available. So if your throughput requirement is higher than 300 kg, we will have the right system for you. After talking about the typical spice mills, I want to stress the high product quality again, since, as I already mentioned, this is highly important for all of our end customers. And our solution for getting the highest product quality is cool and cryogenic grinding. So ambient milling means the milling is taking place between 20 to up to 60 degree, depending on your country or where the machine is installed. But the fact is that volatile oils tend to evaporate at higher temperatures. So by ambient milling, we already lose a lot of volatile oils. One solution is cool milling. That means cooling of the process air by a heat exchanger or another option could be injecting liquid nitrogen directly into the milling chamber. Both options have the target to get you a constant milling temperature, which is great to preserve volatile oils and therefore to preserve taste. But I have to admit that cool grinding is not as efficient as cryogenic grinding, since cryogenic grinding will be the highest level of preserving volatile oils. The reason is that the entire product gets frozen before it enters the mill. So before it enters a cooling screw with liquid nitrogen, and liquid nitrogen has a temperature of minus 196 degrees. So not even the product gets frozen, also the volatile oils gets frozen. And they stay frozen through the entire milling process. So after the milling process, the volatile oils are still in the product. And that means that the taste and the aroma and the entire flavor is in the product which is a great advantage. And I'd like to show you an example. So let's have a look at the white pepper. So we start with a volatile oil content in the beginning before we mill it with a 100%. After ambient milling, only 57.8% are still there. That means 42% of the volatile oil and therefore of the taste is gone. If we compare it with cryogenic grinding, then after milling, 94.5% are still there. That means only 5% are gone. So we saved a lot of flavor and taste, which gives you actually a better product quality. But the product quality is not the only advantage of cryogenic grinding, there are a lot more. So due to the point that we freeze the entire product, it gets very brittle. And that means that it is easier to grind for the mill. So in the end, we can achieve a higher product fineness. And due to the point that there is hardly no oxygen inside the system, so we are working with a lot of nitrogen, the product can get a longer shelf life. And in addition, we have reduced agglomeration. But there are also process advantages. So due to the point that it's easier to grind, and if we compare it with ambient grinding and we stay on the same milling fineness, we can achieve a higher throughput because it's easier to grind. And therefore, we have a reduced power consumption. Furthermore, dust explosions can be avoided Due to the low oxygen level, it is not possible that an explosion can happen. And this is a great thing because for natural products, we always need to take care about dust explosion. 
So all in all, cryogenic grinding gives us great advantages. Last but not least, I'd like to invite you to join us for trials in our test center. So it's always a good thing if you bring your own product and try it on our machines. So you see directly uh, the performance of our machines, what they are capable of. So you get hard figures and proof. And now I'm very excited to learn more about mixing and blending. Benedict, thank you for your presentation. Uh, now I will continue with Hosokawa Micron's mixing technologies. And for mixing of spices, Hosokawa has a variety of different mixing uh, technologies specifically designed for different applications and different powder characteristics. I would like to highlight a few of these characteristics and challenges. For example, obviously one uh, is powder characteristics. We all know that powders can have a variety of characteristics from very free-flowing powders to cohesive powders, but also very fragile powders which have a tendency to break during the operation, which could be unwanted. Mm -hmm. uh, another aspect taking in consideration selecting your mixer is flexibility. What does your process look like? Do you process a mono product or do you want to mix a variety of different mixtures? Do you have a fixed batch size or do you want to variate in batch size? Also an important aspect. Uh, the diversity of spices, of course. Uh, coming back to the powder characteristics, free flowing uh, or cohesive powders, which could have an impact on the necessary mixing energy you put into your mixing operation to get the optimal result for your requirements. Uh, homogeneity. It's important you know on forehand what kind of product homogeneity you are requesting. And last but not least, it's not only a mixing operation. In the end, it's about what kind of quality do you deliver to your customer which is more than just a mixing operation. Uh, talking in terms of product quality, you, have, you could have many aspects. What are your quality uh, parameters? Benedict told you already something about the presence of volatile oils, but it could also be the color or the particle size which determine your product quality. Important aspects to keep in account. Another aspect, capacity. You have to think about uh, throughputs of 10 kilos per hour or 20,000 kilos an hour or batch sizes of 10 liters or 10,000 liters. All characteristics important in selecting the right mixer for your application. Another aspect, cross-contamination. What is cross-contamination? Basically, cross-contamination means how much product remains in the mixer after you empty, empty it and fill up your next batch. Cleaning is an important aspect in selecting your mixer. The first question is of course, do you have to clean in between batches? Or do you have to clean weekly or annually? Whatever. Yes. And the second question is then, how do you clean your mixer? Is it a manual operation? Is it an automatic operation? Is it by wet cleaning or by dry cleaning? All aspects important in selecting your mixer and to keep in consideration. Last but not least, safety. You can think of risks of emissions coming out from the mixer during charging, discharging or operating the mixer. But you also have to consider the risk of dust explosion, with spices we are talking about organic materials, which are definitely sensitive for dust explosion something to keep in consideration. One challenge not on the sheet is your local circumstances. Of course, you, have, uh, you can select a mixer, but the mixer has to operate with your upstream process and your downstream process. Do you have the available space? Uh, does it fit with the operation you are looking for? 
important aspect to consider. A little highlight about the various characteristics and challenging challenges you have to find an answer on in selecting a mixer. And I would like to go a little bit deeper into this. Yeah. Talking about powder mixing and spices, spice mixing is considered to be powder mixing. We always first look at powder characteristics. Yeah? And with respect to powder characteristics, we determine two different aspects or two different characteristics free-flowing powders and cohesive powders. And a few examples of, for example, free-flowing free -flowing powders are pepper as a whole, oregano, garlic, basically a little bit coarse grinded spices with low levels of oil or fat. Cohesive powders typically are fine grinded and contain higher levels of oil or fat or can be fibrous, which negatively impact on the flow characteristics. A little bit more in the characterization of the two different powders. Free-flowing powders have relative small interparticle forces. Basically, every particle has a tendency to stick together. The coarser the particle, the less the interparticle forces. Free-flowing powders are typically dry, so low moisture levels and low levels of fat or oil. One thing you have to keep in mind is that free-flowing powders, they look easy, they can be easily packed, they can be easily mixed, but they have a strong tendency to segregate. And segregate means more or less demixing effect. Uh, here you see a few driving forces for segregation. If you have large particles with fine particles, there's directly a risk for segregation. If you have light particles and heavy particles, this could also be a driver to create a segregation effect. Cohesive powders, the opposite of free-flowing powders, they have a strong tendency to stick together due to strong interparticle forces. So basically what happens is they create little agglomerates together. Often they are fat, fatty or wet, but could also be dry if very fine. And the particle size is typically below 75 micron. Cohesive powders have bad flow characteristics, which ask some attention for your mixing operation and also for your uh, storage and downstream processing. So there is a main difference between free-flowing and cohesive powders, which will have an impact on the selection of your mix. Typically, uh, cohesive powders need more mixing energy than free-flowing powders. Why is that? Because the particles of cohesive powders have a tendency to stick together due to electrostatic or liquid boundaries, and these have to be broken. So, General rule, the more cohesive the powder is, the more mixing energy you might need for your mixing operation. On this graph, you see the Hosokawa mix, batch mixing technologies we offer. And the graph is showing a relation between maximum mixing intensity, so the maximum mixing energy that the specific mixer can supply during the mixing operation in relation to the speed of the rotating element. Our conical Nauta mixer, I think well known in mixing of spices, is one of the low, low share mixes, lowest share mixes available on the market, very friendly to products. And from the Nauta mixer, we developed a range of different technologies, the Vitomix, the CPM mixer and the Cyclomix with their own specific mixing intensities, which I will uh, go into a little bit deeper right now. So we start today with our low share mixer, the Hosokawa Nauta mixer. Uh, the typical design features of the Nauta mixer are low share mixing of fragile products. So not only 
powders, but also spices as a whole, or leaves you can think of. It is very flexible in your batch size. So if you want to produce batches of 2000 kilo, but from time to time also smaller batches, this can be easily done with our Nauta Mixer technology. Uh, the, conical, the typical conical shape of this Nauta Mixer uh, guarantees you an optimal yield, so a full discharge with limited product remaining after discharge. And it's suitable for manual and automatic cleaning. If required, it can be supplied fully in accordance with today's EH guidelines. Should be no problem. And it's available in sizes from 5 liter to 80,000 liter. If you are facing issues with mixing of fragile products and you don't want to break your nice freeze-dried leaves, Nauta Mixer could be an option. And if you want to be flexible in batch size, different spices, different recipes, the Nauta Mixer will guarantee you a constant high quality mixing accuracy. On this picture you also see uh, an example of a Nauta Mixer which is used for manual dry cleaning and in this case accessibility to the mixer internals are important. Hosokawa developed nice inspection doors which are fully sanitary and fully smooth inside surface finish to guarantee an optimal yield of your mixer design. After the Nauta mixer I want to present to you the Hosokawa Phytomix which is a mixer operating in a range from low to mid-chair mixing. During the mixing operation of the Phytomix, the product will be brought in a kind of fluidization state, which makes the mixer extremely suitable for mixing liquids onto a powder without creating unwanted agglomerates. Talking about liquids, you can think of etheric oils, volatile oils, fats or any other liquid necessary for your process. Next in the range is the Hosokawa CPM mixer or conical pedal mixer, which is typically a mid-chair mixing mixer suitable for homogenizing larger batches of spices to compensate variations in your feed material. And it is also suitable for thermal treatment of your spices due to the high heat transfer ratio you know, during the mixing operation. The last one in the range of our batch mixing technologies is the Hosokawa Cyclomix, which is a high shear mixer. And you can recognize this on the relative small vessel compared to the large drive mode. The Cyclomix is used in spice processing for mixing and coating of liquids to the powder and to some extent also to thermal treatment and agglomeration processes. After presenting to you our batch mixing technologies, I also would like to present a few slides on our Hosokawa steam sterilization technology. Spices are grown and harvested in many different uh, places all over the world under different circumstances and before final processing of your spices it's often requested to introduce a sterilization step to reduce the bacteria, yeast or molds into your spice products. Hosokawa offers here for a solution the Hosokawa HSSP sterilization system. Yeah. The Hosokawa steam sterilization technology is a batch system based on our conical uh, pedal dryer technology. It enables you to operate dedicated recipes for the different spices you want to process. It guarantees you a minimum of etheric oil loss due to your specific recipe for spices and it also allows you to control the moisture of your final product. So, introduced of 
included in our sterilization process, there is a drying step. Where is the sterilization technology used for? It's for sterilization, mixing and drying your spices in one operation. It is absolutely gentle for your spices and it offers you maximum flexibility in batch size and different spices to be sterilized. Here you see uh, a graph of a typical sterilization process and what is most important to highlight is that during any sterilization process the time the product is on temperature should be limited due to the loss of etheric oils or influence product characteristics. On the graph you see that the actual sterilization time for this process is only two minutes and afterwards the cooling and drying of product can take place in one operation. In the center you see the Hosokawa conical pedal dryer technology. Uh, on the right top corner you see the heating and cooling skit which is taking care of temperature control of the jackets and the introduction of steam. During this techno talk I think we gave you a lot of information but also a lot of aspects, criteria which you have to take in consideration while selecting your mixer or your sterilization technology and we offer you the possibility to test our equipment in practice to make sure we meet your requirements and you get to know our equipment before buying. Therefore, we have a well-equipped technology center. The technologies we presented to you uh, are more or less operating as standalone single units, but the reality in, in the production of your spices is often different. It's a complex system of interacting activities, which all uh, have to fit together. So the Hosokawa Group is your reliable partner for single units, but also for full system integration. One conclusion we would like to share with you before ending this techno talk is selecting the best technology for your application is often a complex process of interacting criteria. So try before you buy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.